Well, in the most basic way I can say what clinical skills is, um, it's a preparation before you start working in the hospital setting. During the first two years, we are mainly focusing on studying the science, the medical science, before we start working in the hospital. We don't have any experience, clinical experience, these first two years. So the way the school is able to prepare us before going into the hospital is giving us these training periods throughout the two years where we are able to work with um, patients, and these are standardized patients, which basically means that they're actors pretending to be patients. And they give us an opportunity to go through the motions of what we're supposed to ask in a clinical setting, and then how to do a physical exam, and then finally how to write up our notes and present. A standardized patient is a patient who has been trained to be not only a patient, but a coach for the students. These standardized patients have, most of them have been in the program for a long time, and they understand the exam that we're supposed to be doing that day. And they also know exactly where we're supposed to touch them, how we're supposed to ask them questions. So when we're actually performing the exam, at the end we have a chance to speak with them and they'll say, you know, the way that you asked this question maybe made me feel a little uncomfortable, or, you know, you forgot to listen under my shirt when you were listening for my lung sounds. So they really provide direct feedback as to how it feels to be your patient. I think that the encounters are designed to be extremely realistic. However, I think that they can be as unrealistic as a student makes them. If the student enters the room with the mindset that this is not real, these patients aren't real, they're not really sick, then they're not going to get the best um, experience and learning opportunity out of the encounter. But if you enter the room knowing this is an opportunity for me to practice my skills, to um, get good feedback from an expert and then also from a patient, and though this scenario may not be real, it is realistic. It's going to be repeated time and time again as I enter into the clinical environment, um, then that can be a meaningful experience. And, and, and so while it's not real, I would say it's certainly realistic. And I think that it can be as beneficial as the student makes it. Now, the clinical skills as Mercer uh, currently has it, uh, we have um, a designated clinical skills time where we have some, some basic reading on a physical exam, and then we're quizzed on that, and then we have a lecture and an overview of what's expected of us in a, in a physical exam testing um, practicum. And during that, uh, that time, we're taught how, what to do, how to do it, and then we have time to practice on each other. And then a few days later, we have an assigned time where we, we come and we play doctor, you know, from knocking on the door to walking in, introducing yourself, um, and then going through a good history um, and, and talking with the patient and then putting your hands on the patient and listening and, and feeling and um, performing that physical exam. Coming over to clinical skills during first and second year in some ways was a breath of fresh air. It's a change of pace from the monotony of reading physiology and pathology and pharmacology and biochemistry. Um, and it's an opportunity early on in the medical student's experience to see the knowledge that we're gaining during those didactic years applied to a real world scenario. We don't get a lot of opportunity as first and second years to see real patients. We do two weeks of community medicine during the first year and four weeks during the second year. So clinical skills is really our only chance, unless we do some volunteering, to really put into practice what we're learning in the classroom. And it gives you an opportunity to see the things that I'm learning really do matter and they really will make uh, an impact on the quality of a physician that I become. Um, and, and like I said, it really does help to break up the monotony of the studying day in, day out. It's nice sometimes to dress nicely and put your white coat on and feel like a doctor um, because it's very easy to lose sight of that goal when you're in the drudgery of um, the didactic years. Uh, I, I remember the first time going in and uh, laying hands on a patient and performing a physical exam. The, you know, there's a, a lot of nerves going on because you want to be really good at something and you don't know if you're really good at it. And, you're trying to find your way and, and find your style and take book knowledge and apply it and make it your own. Um, and, and that's really the hardest part about tailoring your skill set as a physician is reading about all, this, all these disease processes and the way to do something, but 
not only doing it like a robot, but incorporating yourself and your personality into that experience um, and, and developing what type of doctor you're going to be. Um, as I went through third and fourth year in the hospital, there were many situations in the hospital where you feel a little overwhelmed. So the only thing you had to rely on was the foundation uh, that you, you have during the training in clinical skills. I remember my first day in the hospital was with internal medicine. The resident had, I believe, around eight patients that he had to go see. So he went ahead and assigned me to two patients that I had to see immediately, and that was my first day. I was scared, <laughs> a little overwhelmed, and the, but the main thing that kept me calm throughout the whole thing was knowing exactly what I was supposed to do with the patient, and it was because of the training I had um, here at Clinical Skills.